Okay, I think the video is going right now. All right, so first thing that I'm going to do, I told them, if you're watching this video, get a different color, uh, if at all possible. If not, you know, you can try to figure this out without, but I'm going to get a different color. Section 7-2, we're going to talk about the graphs of the other three trig functions, which are cosecant, secant, cotangent, okay? Oh. After you figured out the graph of sine and cosine, cosecant and secant are pretty easy, okay? So I'm going to graph them straight on here, and I'm going to use exactly the same graph and I'm going to show you what secant and cosecant look like, okay? So that's why I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to do y equals, which one goes with sine, by the way? Uh, cosecant. No. Cosecant, right? C and S go together. So y equals cosecant. Cosecant is going to be this guy. So I'm going to put him on here, and I'm going to put secant on this graph, okay? So I'm going to do those in different colors, okay? So you will have two graphs on one thing. When you are graphing cosecant, you really have to graph sine kind of first, right? Okay. So this is what cosecant looks like, and it's just pretty well easy. Cosecant is going to have vertical asymptotes, and the vertical asymptotes will be where sine touches the midline, okay? So your vertical asymptotes here will be at pi and 2 pi and 0 and on forever to the left and to the right, okay? Those are where your vertical asymptotes are. Okay. Secant will be the same thing. It's where cosine touches the midline. So in this case, it's going to be at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying by where he touches the midline? Yeah. Right? He crosses the midline at 0 here. So wherever he crosses there, that's where my vertical asymptote will be. Like halfway, be halfway between, between the high and low point, that's where my vertical asymptote will occur. Okay. Now, this goes fast. Cosecant, the graph of cosecant, they're just like basically kind of par uh, parabolas off of sine. That's what cosecant looks like. That's the graph of cosecant. Okay. So you really kind of do have to graph sine in order to graph cosecant. It touches that top point? Of it does. They touch each other, yes. So, so cosecant will go down and touch one, and it will go up and touch negative one. Yeah? Okay. So basically cosecant will not live in between negative one so and one. So cosecant is basically the tangent. <coughs> right, right. He's talking about the asymptotes, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so cosecant is that. Secant is the same thing. Okay. Secant is the same thing. He's the parabolas based off of those. Okay. Uh, now the two, the right and the left side don't look like parabolas because they're like half of a parabola. But if this would go on forever, it would just look like two parabolas. Or multiple parabolas off of off of those guys, okay? okay? And you have your vertical asymptotes in between each one, separating them all out, okay? Okay. Now, given this, okay, given this, if we're talking about cosecant in relationship to sine, sine had a period of two pi. Does cosecant have the same period, two pi? Yeah. Or is it pi now instead? Two pi. It is two pi because it takes this long from zero to two pi before it starts over again, right? I would have another up one up here and a down one down here, right? If yes. I keep going on. So his period is two pi. Okay. His domain. Okay. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do period is still two pi domain. Okay. Domain left and right. Will he go left forever and right forever? Will he touch everything left and right? No. No, because he's not going to touch those vertical asymptotes, okay? So I'm going to put all reals except, how would we write that? Because he's not touching He's not touching every place at pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, he'll have another vertical asymptote. Pi over 2 plus pi in. Is it pi it would be, pi plus? Is it x pi? In. It's pi in. It would be pi in. Every interval of pi, right? He's not going to touch every interval of pi. Okay? So every interval of pi he will not touch, right? The range. Up and down. He'll go up forever, he'll go down forever, but he won't be in here, right? So all reals except one and negative one. Okay. Now, will he touch one and negative one? Yeah. Okay. So all reals except uh, between, I'll just put between uh, negative 1 and 1, okay? But he will touch negative 1 and 1 exactly, right? It would actually be like 
negative point nine 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 and positive point nine nine nine. Couldn't you just do like parentheses negative one and one because they don't have to touch? Yeah, but it that gets kind of hairy because it's like accept those values. So because we did the accept, I, I worded it weird. So anyway, all right. What about the period of cos or of secant? Is it still two pi? Yeah. Like sine, like cosine. Like. Yeah, it takes this long before we start over again, right? Okay. So it is still two pi. So the period stays the same. I'm gonna put that over here. Period is still two pi. Okay. Domain. Will you touch everything left and right? Math homework done. Exactly. Okay. Domain. Will you touch everything left and right? Yeah. Except those vertical asymptotes, right? And those vertical asymptotes are occurring at every interval of pi over two. So domain is all reals except. Uh, pi over 2 plus what? Pi n, right? Yeah, it's really plus or minus. If you like plus or minus, that's fine. Yes. So pi over 2 plus pi n equals pi over 2 plus another pi n plus another pi n or minus pi n minus pi n. Okay, so the domain is that. Range, what's the range going to be? Same thing as what cosecant was, right? Okay, so the range will be all reals except, am I spelling except right? That does not look right for some reason. Yeah, it's E. It's E. What? If you put it in A, then it's accepting No, but for some reason, I, I know it's except. That is correct. But it just looks weird for some reason. Just take out the C and the E and just show you. Good, good. Are we doing all right so far? Okay, so when they are going to ask you to graph cosecant, always graph sine first. When they graph, ask you to graph secant, always graph cosine first. And then the rest of it is pretty easy, okay? All right, now, I am not going to, I'm not going to graph cotangent on top of tangent because they are a little bit different than one another, okay? I'm going to use the same units, though, so try to put your y-axis down here. And we'll use the same units going across so you can compare them, okay? So I'm still going to label this guy right here at pi over 2. This guy is going to be here at pi. Do you see how I'm trying to do this? Yeah. I'm trying to make it so that the, the, the like number lines are basically the same. Okay, this guy will be 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi is over here somewhere. Okay, and what did I see? Negative pi over 2, et cetera. Okay, then we can compare tangent and cotangent. Yep. All right, so this is y equals cotangent of x. When you're graphing cotangent, don't graph tangent first. If they say graph cosecant, by all means graph sine first. If they say secant, by all means graph cosine first. But if they say cotangent, just graph cotangent. Because it, it is a little bit different than tangent. Okay? He looks the same, except he's reversed. So he goes this way, and he's shifted over. Okay, so it, I think cotangent is actually easier to remember because instead of your vertical asymptotes being at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, your vertical asymptote is here at pi, at 0, at 2 pi, that's where your vertical asymptotes will be. Okay, so they're just shifted pi over 2 units over, that's where your vertical asymptotes will be, and it goes down the other direction. Right? Morgan? <laughs> We're gonna have it. We're gonna have an injury Why here. Why is it up there? Morgan put it up there. Don't, oh don't, no. Okay, don't, 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 so there's that. He shifted over. His uh, asymptotes are at 0, pi, 2 pi, blah, 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 all that good stuff. And uh, that's what he looks like. He goes downhill instead of uphill. Why are you shifting my pencil? I have two. What? None. Okay, we'll, go, we'll do pure domain and range again no, or this one also. Period, domain, range. Okay, so period, they said it's just pi, is that true? Pi. Right? So this is the period. Period is just pi. Yeah. 
They're just at, okay. Period is just pi, right? Okay. The domain. Will he touch everything left and right? He won't touch the vertical asymptotes. Okay. And the vertical asymptotes are, are occur. So all reals except X, C, E, P, T. C, oh, not C, I screwed the C and the E up. What? I can't spell. I don't know. It's just one of those days where, like, words that you write don't look like they're supposed to, right? Is it like they say one word over All reals except? Pi n. Okay, now, here's the deal. Except pi n. Okay, I'm going to put this over here. Somebody might say all reals except pi plus pi n, right? Because they see this vertical asymptote at pi. Is that the same thing as pi n? No. Is pi plus pi n the same thing as pi n? No. Wait, yeah. They're the same thing, no? N can be negative. So N can be negative 1, right? And then we would get this back, just back to pi plus pi n. So pi plus pi n will be the same thing as just pi n, right? So if you, if you choose to go off of this guy and say it's every pi n later, that's fine. Right? Oh, it's not the same. It's well, same. yes, it is. If you plug 0 in for an integer to 0, it's still pi. Like, yeah, like, but if you're at 0, no, 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 you're no. plug by you plugging pi, zero, you get 0. No, plugging 0 in here would be the same thing as plugging 1 in here. It's just shifted over 1. Because n, shift. when we're doing this, when we're doing this, we're plugging every value in for n. Okay, so cut me. If I plug every value in for n, like 1, negative 1, negative 2, positive 2, I'll still get the same numbers as what I get here when I plug those numbers in. So you're at 0. You plug in 0. You're at 0 with the correct one in. Pi, you're not at pi, you're at 0. But, but the, deal is, the deal is, if I plug in every number in for n here, and plug in every number in for n here, I'll still get the same set. Okay, whatever. N. So. Those two, you can use those both interchangeably. I don't care. Whichever one makes more sense to you. All right, what about range? It's all reals. All reals. Range is all reals. Okay, now. Here we go. That's an R. Be quiet. Are you making fun of my R? Is that what you're saying? There, whatever. I fixed it. Okay. So there he is. All right, so use this guy to help you. You're going to need to refer back to him a lot. Let's go to example one. Okay. All right. Um, what I'm going to do first, every single time they ask you to graph cosecant or secant, graph the other one, right? So cosecant goes with sine. So I'm going to graph three si negative three, excuse me, sine t. Okay? Negative three sine t. All right, so... Um, all right, I'm going to take a pencil here. I'm going to scrap this in pencil real quick. Why? Normal sign. That's right. Normal sign looks like this. Okay? This is 2 pi. That's why I'm graphing them in pencil, because this is what normal sign is. Right? And it goes up to 1 and down to negative 1. That's what normal sign is. Okay? Now, if I do negative 3 sine of t, Right? Negative 3 sine of t means he's going to go up to 3 and down to negative 3. But he's going to start down first and then go up, mm -hmm. right, because of the negative. Okay, so I'm going to go down to 3 and up to 3, and he's going to go down first. He's still going to cross here at pi, so he'll go like this, and it'll look really weird like that. That's what he's going to look like now. This right here is y equals negative 3 sine of t. Are we okay with that? Yes, sir. But I want, I want, if you can, if you can do it by skipping these steps, fine. That's fine. I don't Let's care. I don't care. I want negative 3 cosecant of t. So I'm going to use a different color to graph cosecant of t. The things that you will need to make sure and do is to put your vertical asymptotes in there and then just make your little loops. This is cosecant. This is cosecant. That's what he looks like. Okay. And now we're done. Okay. So. It's just those little loops off of sign, and you will need to put your vertical asymptotes in there, and then you're done. Okay? Right? So it, it kind of helps to use different colors if you want to, or put it in like a light pencil until you get to the post to get put, because that's what you actually want to graph. Yeah? Good? Uh, no. They just want you to graph it. Okay? They, they will ask you on your homework assignment. They'll ask you questions about the What's the... What's the lowest that co what's the lowest cosecant goes? If they would ask you this, what's the lowest, what's the minimum value of cosecant? 
include domain and range when they just say sketch. All right, let's do this one. Okay. I want to graph uh, secant. So we need to graph something else first. Cosine. Okay, so I'm going to change this to 2. Cosine t minus 3. All right, I'm going to use my pencil to do cosine. Cosine starts here. I want to make them short. Cosine starts here and goes like this. What? Um, it fluctuates over areas. Uh, no, it, it just doesn't work. Yep, yep. Okay, that's what cosine does, right? We're going to graph cosine. So that's normal cosine. So let's talk about what these transformations do, right? For cosine, there are two things that are happening. The two is going to make him what? It's going to make him taller, or it's a vertical a vertical stretch by two. It's going to change your amplitude. And then the other one is Okay, and the negative three is? Down three. Oh, I like that a lot. Down three, right? Down three is easier. Okay, so that negative on the end is just—it would just be like the same thing as x squared minus three, right? This is down three. Okay, so there he is. All right, so I have graphed normal cosine. Let's do this stuff to him, and then let's change him to secant. Okay, so I want to make him taller. So instead of going to one, he's going to go to two, and negative one, he's going to go to negative two, right? He's going to do that, except he's going to be down three. So normally he would start here, right? This is where he would start. He would go down and come back up. But now I'm going down three units, right? Down three units. One, two, three. He's going to start here. I want to put an S here for start. He's starting there. Okay, now, how low does he go? Well, pretty darn low. Pretty darn low. Yeah, how low? If, if your amplitude is two, how wide is he total? Four. Four. If we're starting at negative one, he's going to be four units tall, so he's going to go down to three, four, five. He's going to go all the way down here. So this point right here will be down at negative five. He's going to go like this and come back up. Quite, quite come up very far. Does that make sense? Okay, so... All right, so we moved him, so he should start up here if he's too tall now, and he should go down and come back up. But since we're moving him down three units, he's got one, two, three units down, okay? And we're saying that if he's too tall, that means he's actually four units tall, basically. Does that make sense? Four units tall. So he would start up here, at, he would start at negative one, he would go down all the way to negative five, and come back up to negative one. Does that sense? Because that's a distance of four, right? If your amplitude is two, then that means the whole thing is four from top to bottom. Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. However you want to think about that, that makes it. That makes it now we That's what cosine is. Okay. Now, where will your vertical asymptote? It it will cross like halfway between here, right? That's where he will touch. Your vertical asymptotes will go through those guys, right there, right there. I should mark. I should put this in my in my other color. Ugh. Whatever. My drawing's not very good. There you go. I'll make this better. In the blue. Those are my vertical asymptotes in the blue. Okay? Now I want to graph the secant. So he will look like this guy. He will look like this guy. And he will look like this guy. I know. I know. I know. Well, we could have made him shorter to start with, and then that would have helped, but I didn't, so. Yeah, that's a really long line. That is a really long, yeah. Good. Does that make sense? Ish. Okay, maybe your vocal here graphing is better than mine, but. Okay. Okay, good? We'll see. All right, uh, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and stop there. This backside is going to be a horizontal shift. And we'll wait for tomorrow to do that, okay? But I would get a start on these because they're kind of ugly, some of them, okay? Now, listen to me real quick. If you get a start on the homework, if you get a start on the homework, listen. If you get a start on the homework and you start it now, 
any problems that have parentheses here where it's T it minus something, it moves it left and right that far. Okay, we haven't talked about that yet. So, right, right, okay, so if you want to go ahead and do it, that's fine. But any of these, feel free to skip until we do this tomorrow, unless you can figure it out, like Lynn knows that that's going to move it to the right high over four, right? Okay, but we haven't done any of those yet, so if you want to skip those for now, go for it, we'll do this again for tomorrow, okay? But I would get a start on all the other ones, okay? I would get a start. All right. Okay, it helps to use multiple colors if you if you have that option, all right?